What is up guys, Peach here, back again with another Destiny video. It is Wednesday, which means it's Arms Day, and I apologize that this video is up so late. Usually I try to get them up early in the day, but I wanted to get the Nightfall video out today, and I just haven't had a chance to record this until now. But regardless, let's hop right into it. Starting off with my Warlock, so we're starting off with the Suros PDX 45. This is one of my favorite pulse rifles right now. I have a great one with full auto and great stability. So let's check out what these have. So on our first one, we've got fitted stock, rodeo, speed reload, and rifle barrel, as well as appended magazine. Now, base stats, this is pretty good because we've got fitted stock for a little bit of stability. Rodeo reduces the severity of the recoil, and then rifle barrel gives us some range, taking down our reload speed a little bit, but this already has a pretty quick reload speed. So this in itself is not a bad roll. You do want some more range on this thing because its base stats don't have the best range to it. But let's check out the second one. So on this one, we've got fitted stock, range finder, feather mag, snapshot, and rifle barrel again. So we have fitted stock for some more stability. Again, this already has pretty good stability to start with. We've got range finder, which helps you hit shots at further range. It doesn't actually increase the range. Um, it basically increases your aim assist at range. Kind of a weird way to put it, but that's how Bungie actually has this perk, not aiming the weapon increases its range, it just increases the amount of aim assist that you have at range. It's kind of a weird thing to think about, but regardless, it's still a decent perk. And then we have Rifle Barrel to increase our range as well. This, again, is not a bad roll. Range Finder is a good perk. Um, it's not like on shotguns how it increases the like how far you can shoot with the shotgun. It actually stays the same, just helps with the aim assist. So, But on Pulse Rifles, it's actually pretty good. And finally, our third one here, we've got Perfect Balance, which increases our stability. We've got Unflinching, so it's easier to aim under fire. Speed Reload and Reinforce Bro, which takes away a little stability but gives us more range. This, again, is not a bad roll. Compared to the other two, it's not as good. So, between the two of these, it's kind of your choice. I would prefer the one with Range Finder, because I don't actually like the way that Rodeo changes the recoil patterns. It's kind of weird to me, it feels like it hops all over the place, but really it's up to your personal preference. I would just go with Rangefinder. And then we've also got the Cyril's JLB42. I'll keep it simple for you. These two don't have grenades and horseshoes. You don't want them. You want this one with grenades and horseshoes. So that's definitely what you want. And I apologize for that loud noise that you just heard. That was my phone going off. It was sitting on my desk. That's my fault. So I would definitely pick this one up. All right, so we're gonna switch over to my Titan real fast and see what the rest of the weapons are this week. All right, guys, we are back on my Titan. So let's hop right into it and see what the rest of the guns are from Banshee this week, starting off with the Judith D hand cannon. Again, this thing is crazy. You can actually two-shot people with the one from last week with crowd control or feeding frenzy active, whichever one it was. You could actually two-shot headshot somebody. Crazy rule. Let's check out what they have this week. We've got Surrounded, Final Round, Speed Reload, Armor Piercing Rounds, and Oiled Frame on this one, so not really any good perks. Final Round's decent, but otherwise I wouldn't pick that one up. So on our second one here, we've got Surrounded, Feeding Frenzy, Speed Reload, Armor Piercing Rounds, and Small Bore. Small Bore is an interesting choice on this hand cannon. It does increase the range and increase our stability while decreasing the reload. However, it reduces the magazine size, which is already fairly small in this hand cannon at seven. Personally, I wouldn't choose that just because I don't want my hand cannon to have six shots. Even on a high impact hand cannon that can probably kill you in two to three shots, I wouldn't do it because that's a pretty small magazine. You're thinking at the most, if you can two shot everybody, you're thinking at most three kills. Not exactly ideal. And then finally, our last one here, we've got Hot Swap, Final Round, Speed Reload, Armor Piercing Rounds, and Reinforced Barrel. And holy crap, does Reinforced Barrel give you a lot of range. So with Hot Swap, Final Round, Reinforced Barrel, it takes away almost all your stability. That's okay on a hand cannon. On a hand cannon, you kind of want to take your sh time with your shots, especially this one that has such high impact and a low rate of fire. You want to take your time a little bit, pace your shots. I know it can get hard to not want to spam it, but this is the better one this week. So I would go with this third one. And next we've got the Lyumilla D Pulse Rifle. So starting off with the first one here, we've got Last Resort, Full Auto, Snapshot, Fitted Stock for some stability, and Injection Mode for a little bit more stability, but you're losing some range. I'm a big fan of Full Auto Pulse Rifles. 
This pulse rifle also fires the Hecky archetype fires an additional shot, so they have a four burst shot instead of the three. This isn't the best archetype of pulse rifle right now. Right now, the high uh, rate of fire, lower impact ones like the Hawksaw are kind of the dominant ones. So it's not the best one right now. It might be decent in PPE. However, so that one roll was decent. However, this one's even better. We've got crowd control, counterbalance, high caliber rounds, fitted stock for a little bit more stability. And we've also got old frame if you want to get some reload speed and at reduced range. But with crowd control and counterbalance, this thing's going to be a beast. It'll probably be better in PvE, like I said, not PvP. Uh, you can still pick it up and mess around with it. And then finally, our last one. We've got Danger Close, Full Auto, Snapshot, Fitted Stock, and Oiled Frames. So this one's kind of garbage. Um, so it's really down to, do you want a Full Auto one, or do you want one with crowd control and counterbalance? Um, neither really had amazing stability perks. This one kind of had the best with counterbalance, and you do still have Fitted Stock. So, give or take, this one's pretty good, though. So then finally, we have the Cockatiss SR4. Scout Rifle from Amalon. So let's take a look. On this one, we've got Triple Tap, Quick Draw, Casket Mag, Grenadier, and Exhumed. Decent. Uh, no stability perks, which is what I always look for, especially on Scout Rifles. So let's go ahead and check out the second one here. We've got Triple Tap, Quick Draw, Handblade Stock for more stability, Grenadier, and Underdog. So this one I actually really like. We've got Triple Tap and Handlight Stock, so it kind of gets almost to my Hung Jury's level of stability. And then we've also got Grenadier Kills with this weapon to reduce the cooldown of your grenade. I actually do like that perk. It actually is pretty nice. So, not bad. And then our last one, we've got Icarus, Casket Mag, or Lightweight, or Grenadier, or Eye of the Storm. So, personal preference, this middle one's the best for sure. We've got Triple Tap, we've got Hand Light Stock, and Grenadier is actually a pretty good perk. So that's the one I would go with. So, looking at our field test weapons this week, we've got the Amalon Hand Cannon to make precision shots with, a Suros Pulse Rifle to use against Hive targets, we've got a Rocket Launcher to use against high-ranking enemies, a Shotgun to use against Hive targets, and finally, an Amalon Sniper Rifle to use in the Crucible, so we only have four or sorry, we only have one Crucible weapon and then four to do in PvE, which is a pretty nice balance. I don't really like to do the Crucible ones. Sometimes they're fun, though. Moving on to our weapons for the next week, we have the Suros ARI-41 Auto Rifle. It's a decent auto rifle. It's kind of got the high rate of fire, not Doctrine level, but up there, as well as the ARI-45. Again, another decent auto rifle. You could pick up either and get good rolls and have fun with them. They're not going to be the kings of the Crucible right now, though. And we've also got the Amalan Tunella SR4 Scout Rifle. Decent Scout Rifle, you could pick it up. Also the Hack Hacky Herja D Pulse Rifle. Again, not my favorite. None of the Hacky Pulse Rifles I really enjoy. You can test it out, see if you like it or not. It, it, again, it's a gamble. And then finally, a gun we haven't seen in a while. We've got the Amalan Irene RR4 Sniper Rifle. This is your high impact sniper rifle along the same lines of a thousand yard, an LDR, or a longbow. However, it's not really liked in the Crucible as much as the others because it has unfamiliar scopes and its aim assist is a lot lower. It can be really, really good in PvE though. They can roll with Luck in the Chamber a lot, which helps you only on precision kills. But when you're in PvE doing damage to a boss, that's actually kind of nice sometimes. So, I would pick it up. Experiment with it. Have some fun. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Sorry again that it was later than usual and let me know what you picked up from the gunsmith. And as always, peach out.